Hi everyone, I hope you're good guy and welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna talk about my Berlin Techno Ableton template. So this template I've been made during my live stream session. So I've just moved them to my Audio React channel and they are not anymore on this channel. So you can go and check them and you can see the whole process from scratch. So this template explanation will be in two parts. So the first part today where I'm gonna explain each element individually, talking about sound design, MIDI, composition and so on. And then next week I will talk more about the arrangement, automation, variation, mixing, and mastering. So everything has been created just only by using Ableton Stock plugin and some of my samples. If you want to grab the project, uh, link in the description. And yeah, just let's have a listen how it sounds and let's dig into it. So. Kind of very hypnotic, deep techno a little bit. All right, let's dig into it. So the first track is my sidechain. Basically, it's a kind of a, a ghost track. Basically, you cannot hear it. It's on send only right here. And I use it to trigger all of my sidechain compression that I will have on other track such as the rumble or your ambience. And then I have this first group, which is kick and rumble. Basically, it's kind of the low end. I uh, made of two things. First, the kick, which you can hear this kind of clicky uh, kick. It's kind of, I use a kick from my uh, Wavetable Techno Bank 2 called Pearl and it's kind of deep, nice kick. And I process it this way, add a bit of rumble. So if you want to find out more about this rack, I put the link in the description. You can find the video where I explain in detail. Basically, it's just a rumble with reverb distortion, low pass filter as usual. And then drum bass. I really like kind of giving this click effect. And it's just like in hard mode. Hard mode usually works well with any bass sound. And yeah, that's pretty much it with compression. And then I were finding the kick and the rumble a bit like to muffle, like to just bring some high frequency. I just used the channel EQ from Ableton, which is like kind of a nice EQ. If you just want to boost or reduce the high or the low frequency, this kind of things is super fast and then it's just a limiter. It have actually not even working. And so once I had this rumble as well, I wanted to play with the tom and getting a kind of groove. So the MIDI pattern, it's kind of a kind of a rolling pattern if you think in certain way just I remove this is just like usually what I will do I will do like 16 knots and then I will just remove some of them to see which one works well and then obviously you have to play with the kick to but obviously you can experiment and try different MIDI pattern the sound itself so you see it's a 909 tom so the original sound is like this but I filter it as you can see here and I apply a filter envelope as well then it's just some session compression bit of reverb and then you low pass everything because obviously it's kind of a, still a room but it's not really like a tom pattern and so yeah both together And then I've applied an overall process because I was still found finding that it's kind of super messy. Especially in the low end, it's quite prominent. So that's why I kind of use an EQ to kind of get rid of all of the frequency. Uh, I didn't like it. So first cut boost here because again the idea was to reduce this kind of muscle messy sound and kind of gain in clarity so high shares and 
I just found this two frequency was annoying. So I mean, it was kind of making the sound a little bit more clear. So that's why I keep them. So here I add a re I add a, just a little bit of reverb, just like to make it brief a little bit. I've made a rack which is called kick punch, where usually I do that. I use for, but here I just wanted to use quick reverb. Basically, it's just adding a little bit of reverb just to help you kick cuts through the mix. And then I just use gain like to reduce, make the bass in mono under 200 hertz. And yeah, that's our solid bass. So then let's move into the hats. So the hats, I use my uh, drum rack hats, which is pretty convenient because I have everything set and you can see I can play with the GK and the right detune. So this is automation I've made along the track. Uh, I will talk about it more in the part two, but in terms of sound and MIDI pattern, so about the claws I had, you can see both are like 16 claws I had, pretty straightforward. And in terms of sound, it's just simple. I even didn't even process it. Let me remove the drum bus actually. Second claws I had as well, it's just as simple as it is. No even process, no even like, didn't feel to it. So then you have claws I had. So you can hear there is a bit of reverb. This is like a rack I made. Again, if you want to find out more, I will put it in the description. But basically, it's a rack, a drum rack I made to make my life easier, where I have two reverb, one close, one long. I have some G live as well. So this way I can straight away send my uh, hats onto this return effect. So here you can hear it's going into some reverb. And again, it's not much processing. It's just like such a saturator to add a bit of harmonics and then I just filter it really like to focus on the important frequency range and this one is exactly it's exactly the same sample as you can see the name is exactly the same and it's like yeah basically they kind of work together this one is just like giving a kind of impression so you can see it's the one playing here and the open hats pattern is so it's doing this kind of kind of and with this one like with kind of an accent if you can say so and that together that give a nice groove So next up we have ride. So you have two kind of ride. I like to do that. Usually I will have one stereo, which is usually more, more noisy and one in the middle, which is like kind of more metallic classic 909 ride, ride I would say. So this is like the stereo one. So very noisy, bit of saturation. Bit of Redux who had a bit of grittiness and I filter everything. So that's things that works well usually like Redux. Just to add a little bit of grit, filter everything because like I said, I wanted something very noisy. This is a delay to make it stereo and then some sidechain compression. And then we have the right two, which is like more like the 909 classic right. So here again, not that much process, just saturator. In medium curve, so a bit more. Just make you adjust. This is like removing the classic 909 uh, resonant frequency that you have. Bit of reverb, which kind of add a bit of stereo, but don't put too stereo and a bit of sidechain just to have this ducking effect. And you can hear this detune modulation, but that I will come back to it. Uh, next week. So yeah, in terms of MIDI pattern for the ride, you have the noisy one is You can see it's like going up up. It's the darker check the darker velocity point oh, Let me bring this up and it's going up 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 this way rather than this one is more like playing this one, but having the one off beat, this is off beat and this is where your kick is and you can see the velocity is a little bit down where you kick play, which give this impression. So 
All right, and that's it for the hat. So then I feel I add afterward a ride. I wanted an extra noisy kind of sound. And you see that I was talking about noise in the stereo is exactly what I've done. Let me remove all the effect. So here, instead of taking a sample, uh, I use Wavetable because I knew that if I was using a certain Wavetable with FM sound, this is something I talk often, you can get kind of like nice noisy sound and a bit metallic, obviously. And I have, I, the thing is having a high pass filter, filter everything that has been a bit modulated by the amp as well. Something sharp, but not too sharp neither. So that's basically you noisy ride, you know, you don't even need to look for a sample. I knew that this would work. High pass everything. Overdrive had a bit of grittiness. Reverb, put a bit more space and stereo. This is the Gillet device, which make, it's a house effect basically, which makes the sound super stereo. And then as usual, sidechain compression, which is quite savage and violent on this one, but yeah, it's You see, it just add this extra layer of, of noisiness and of drums, which enhance a little bit more the groove. Next up, we have some snare. So the snare, I use them as just like kind of a snare roll. And again, I think it's a 909. Let me remove all of the effect, but yeah, it's a 909 snare. Here, the only thing I've... You can see there is two different, I play with the sustain, one with the sustain down, which kind of make a sharper snare and one with the sustain up, which kind of make it more noisier. And so saturator in mid of groove again here to have a saturation, adding harmonic, but adding a bit as well of, I don't know, punch, crunch. Then EQ. This is more like to make it fit in the mix. I will come back to this next week. and the reverb to make it less dry, obviously. And the process is the same with the clap. The ID is the same. Again, 909 clap, saturation, EQ, and I have delay. And here on top, I have saturation, EQ, reverb. And here as well, I have some delay because here the MIDI, so here the MIDI pattern was like 16, like a rolling snare. And here I have the same with the clap, but you can see here the velocity. Sometimes it's going up, sometimes it's going straight at the maximum. So when it's like this, straight at the maximum, I will only put the delay on the end. If you if you see, I zoom. So here's when the delay is on and here's when it's off. So basically here you have the, prog the velocity progression going from down to up. So the delay is on and here it's like at the maximum effect. I've done that because if you put the delay on when it's 16 clause I had at full velocity, it's kind of gets messy and not nice. I've just put it at the end of the, of the at the four last notes. This way it kind of let a bit of delay after when it's not playing here on this zone. So you're gonna hear. And you see like the fact I have the delay at the end. You see here is stopping straight away, but having a little bit at the end. And yeah, otherwise it's same idea, keep it simple. And so they answer to each other. Once is the snare, once is the clap, and once is with a progressive velocity, once is with velocity full, but no delay. And remember that on top of that, the snare as well, you have like one pattern will be with the sustain down, so a very sharp snare, and one pattern with the sustain up, so a more nauseous pattern. So they both like sharp snare, delay clap, noisy snare, So it was a great way to, from having a very simple 16 roll clap and snare answering to each other to add a bit of variation and to don't be always the same and very repetitive. Next we have perk one with this play from the beginning. So this is again, it's, it's a kind of a clicky percussion and I just like it usually with this kind of deep uh, kind of 808 kick, it sounds good. It's just, I don't know, add an extra things to the track. And the way I made that, so let me remove all of the effect. So you have this sample, I use this kind of tom sample and 
what I've done, it's first, it's playing a lower, this will be the default note, but it's playing a lower one, and it's seventh transpose minus one. So here is the sample, you can see I kind of shorten it, and then amp kind of filter it and make it a little bit greater. Saturator, boost, a little bit everything. And then I filter it, so this way I just have the click basically. There is obviously a million different way to do that. You can use maybe just a basic operator or and having just a very sharp GK and even if you use just a sine wave or whatever, you can get similar. It's just like a way I've done it, how I was inspired on the moment, but then it's just sidechain and reverb. So yeah, and then after with And so I haven't talked about the MIDI pattern, but it's just straight for a 16 notes pattern. Then you have perk two, which these are more like a kind of ambient perk, which kind of... And for this one, I use my noise rhythm rack. I will put it in the description. It's basically, it's a rack I made exactly for this kind of purpose. It's like you have an arpeggiator inside the rack and so you just have to press one note basically and there is some LFO who's gonna modulate the GK of your sound so it's gonna go from sharp to not sharp. All of this LFO kind of create a groove and I use some noisy uh, wavetable so this way you have a noise kind of a noisy rhythm. Uh, so I will put the link if you wanna find out more but yeah basically it's it get this and a bit of saturation and filter and here I play it then after it depends obviously the pattern you play it give a certain groove obviously with because it's an arpeggiator you can it's gonna get this rattle effect but you can obviously play with and I don't remember exactly, but I probably play this live on the push and like until I was finding something that was grooving well and I just record and after I just requantize everything. Then you have perk three. So like noisy clicky percussion. And I use operator, let me remove all of the effect. All right, that's quite interesting because it's completely different than the sound but yeah it play this basic pattern but obviously amp add a bit of crunch and I kind of filter it to just have the clicky part delay to make it move all right and then after I think I play with here if you play with the time You get different uh, kind of tone and kind of weird kind of sound. So this is what you will usually maybe use for a hass effect. You know, usually you will bring the feedback down and you have your time one at zero millisecond, one at 15. But here I like to play with that like this, both in time and together. And when you are in repeat mode, you can get really kind of weird. metallic sound sometimes it's pretty weird i really recommend to experiment with basically that's what i've done during the live stream usually one of my during my live stream I, I like to experiment with things like trying new things trying things different and that's what probably i've done and i ended up using this delay in the kind of a uh, different way than the classic normal delay like just the one before this and bit of reverb and yeah Then comes the lead. So this is the main element. Uh, it's quite a basic sound, but usually the hard thing with that is to get the right hypnotic melody because it's just a basic sine wave, basically. The filter is not really like obviously working. Uh, the envelope, I think is probably the default one. Then is saturation. This is just like for volume automation. Filter delay, so that's a delay I like in Ableton because you can really for each 
channel like left and right to choose a different filter and a different time it kind of asks a bit more effort to get something done other delay device in life but i really like it reverb and then i wanted to reduce the stereo a little bit so the midi pattern one thing i will recommend usually for this kind of track is to don't be scared to play over two or three octave you can see here my root note is g2 but i play also g3 and g4 and then after i have just c sharp here but otherwise it's just g basically a different octave and just c sharp all right and one tip i can give you like to create this kind of hypnotic melody it's basically to choose a loop length which is not like a multiple of two basically something like one bar and half three bar six bar five bar seven bar this kind of length i know six is a multiple of two but like not something like two four eight sixteen which is the uh, usual something like which will create polyometer rhythm because you kick it in four to floor and four bar loop so that's one thing i can give you and yeah that's it for this one then we have our lead two so this I wanted something like dark, a bit crawling kind of scent. Just play one note along the track and the filter is evolving a little bit to make it not too steady. You can see there is quite a bit of process. Let me remove everything. So. So the basic default sound sound like this. So you can see I use the long saw distorted wavetable and I add a bit of warp. kind of give this growling the bandpass filter as well is really nice especially like bandpass filter basically when you after put a delay and a reverb it's usually add a lot of character so 24 db bandpass filter with a bit of drive crank up the resonance you can see i have as well a bit of modulation on the filter which follow the envelope get this kind of pluckiness and and then you can see there is the pitch and the oscillator one warp which are modulated by lfo and after you have as well an lfo2 which is gonna modulate the filter like going up and down very slowly But here I've done something different in terms of modulation. You can see sometimes what will happen is sometimes the LFO will modulate the filter, sometimes no. So sometimes I needed to have automation manual, like manually automation, which I didn't want it to have the LFO modulate the filter, but sometimes I wanted to have my filter automatically modulated by the LFO. So I use bit both. You can see here is where I used this part during the chorus, and this part is where I use the LFO modulating the filter automatically, and otherwise i was using manual control so i will come back to this in part two as well why i choose that and yeah in terms of the sound that is i have the sabbath and then it's more the process so i boost the mid high frequency saturator in hard curve so usually it's at a way much more grittiness and crunch than the other mode like analog clip that i will use usually Slightly using overdrive for this extra crispiness and then autopan gonna slightly make the sound a bit move from the left to the right nothing too crazy too far right or too far left but just adding a bit of movement to don't let it steady in the middle and here the delay add a lot of character so you can see dry weight is almost at 60 percent usually i don't go much more than 30 but here i really wanted to have this kind of answering to the dry signal and the fact that the delay is filter as well it's add a nice character you see that's without the filter but this filter delay add kind of a derby effect and then reverb this is just for loudness and again this is for mixing purpose and this is just again and it's just always playing the same note so you can see like there is the gray one is the one i i didn't i didn't use it it's not playing it's deactivated
But you can see here, uh, again, he's not playing like a, a four bar pattern. But you can see that here is not the same than here. It's more like a one and a half. So if you go there, three bar or one and a half, that's the length of the pattern. So that was going to create a nice hypnotic effect. And yeah, after it evolved during the track, depending on the part. But yeah, that's the two main leads. Then let's move on, on to the chord. So this is kind of a bellish kind of sound. So it's always playing the same chord. Usually the thing is you can take the risk to change the chord and having different, but usually you're going to end most of the time you're going to end up into something cheesy. And so I, I just play the same chord and you can see it's kind of quite a weird chord because you have G sharp and then you have plus nine and then you have A3, which is just plus one. So I wanted really to have this weird they tune a bit vibe and so this one is playing every four bar at the same position basically but let me remove the effect the patch is pretty simple it's again sine wave there is absolutely no modulation what makes the things here is to have this not playing one close to another just one semitone which kind of gives this weird vibe and the reverb so you need long gk with But this if I play kind of a, a normal kind of melody, you can see it's, the sound is sounding normal. But if I play like a note which are close to each other, you get this weird vibe. And this is not was not like an important element, was just like to add a bit of kind of a weird ambiance to the sound. Next up we have the pad. So again, exactly the same kind of purpose here. You really want to have something like, which kind of make you uncomfortable, like this kind of weird sounding detune vibe. And again, the MIDI pattern, you can see here, if I bring this one, one octave upper, but you have again G sharp one, two, three, four, five with C sharp plus five, but inverse. And you have A4, which is plus one, and G, which is minus one. And you get this weird thing. So here you can hear the pitch is modulating, and you have as well the warp again. I modulated, so that's why you see this movement here. And you can hear as well a pitch modulation. It's all done by the LFO one. Very slow rate, very slow amount. You want something like very subtle. But obviously you need to add saturation to make louder as usual. But when you add reverb, again long GK time, a good amount of dry wet. And here again, I use a bandpass filter. I like bandpass filter because they are great to add a bit of character rather than the other filter, but they are quite hard as well in the same time, sometimes hard to use because the sound feel most of the time kind of weak. So just be careful when you use this kind of type of filter. But when you use it well, it's I really like because nice character. And yeah, that's all. it's just low pass filter for depending of the moment of the arrangement. You know, sometimes you want it more in the front, sometimes more in the back. That's what it does, but yeah. So that's again, it's not like a main element. It's there without being there. You know, it's like the kind of thing that if you remove it, you feel it's missing something. But on the overall mix, you don't really hear it neither. You don't really pay attention. Then you have this sent SFX. So this is something I wanted more like for the transition. But on the end, I use it a little bit more in the whole track so you have two type you have this one which are playing a low note so this one i will use it more like for during the break like just before the drop and you have the same sound but playing higher note and this one on the end, I put it along the track and it's basically just playing a bit before the chord and they kind of work well together. Uh. 
and I didn't want it to put it all the time too often, you know, like the chord because after it's too repetitive. So, but yeah, in the context of the track, you have something like that. something like this. So how I made the sound, let me just remove all of the SFX. Here I've done something interesting. I've done what I've called recycling, something I do often for my template or for my own track as well. It's when, for example, I need a kind of a se secondary sound because this is not like a main element. What I will do is I will grab one of the main elements. For, for example, here I took the wave table from, and the whole process effect, I think, from the lead to. And I would just duplicate it and kind of trying to make it a SFX. So you can see it's the same, it's the same wave table. Obviously, I changed the warp and the fault. But you can see still, still there is the band pass filter, there is the sub. The amplitude I make it different with a, a slow attack because I really wanted this kind of SFX effect. So you don't want something sharp and percussive. You want something like which come progressively, which rise and fall. <laughs> And then let me just put the effect actually because actually saturator had a bit of grid and long reverb with a bit more dry wet because obviously it's SFX can be on the background, it's not a problem. Then I add frequency shifter, which is perfect. Like this is like the perfect tool for a techno producer. It's always kind of making any sound weird. You can use either the ring or the shift using the drive as well. When you use the ring, sometimes it's nice to add a bit of character, especially with drums, I recommend that. But anyway, kind of filter a little bit everything and then distortion. Overdrive again is a device I like because you can filter your distortion and again you can add a lot of character. Either you use it gently like here or you can even go a bit more drastically if you want a sound with a bit more character as well. It's really up what you are looking for. And then it's just a Q. But yeah, that's... All right, and then our last track are the ambience track. I almost removed them because I like to use ambience track as kind of at the beginning to kind of fill up the space, you know. It kind of allow me to set the mood to the track, but sometimes what I will do is I will get rid of them because they're kind of making the things a bit more messier than really helping the track and they are not really that necessary. So this is something that maybe I will remove. For this one, I, I left them, but I just wanted to let you know that that's something as well I do sometimes. I create them and I just delete them at, at the end because I found the track sounding better without them. So this is something I resample. If I remember well during the live stream, I use this rack, which is the noise rhythm. It's basically the same than the other one, but, and I kind of resample it. Uh, I don't remember why I resample it. Probably a reason I, I would need to check in the live stream why I resample it. But it's just the basic noise kind of. So this is very similar to the percussive one, uh, this one. Again, no really particular reason. I will put the link in the description to grab this rack. With this rack, which is great, is you can change the wave table. And so you can really create different kind of noisy tone and ambience and according as well, because you have an arpeggiator. So before I said you can play just one note, but obviously you can kind of play chords or you can play kind of different combination to really at different kind of octave to really get different kind of dark ambience or more like a very high pitched ambience as well. And again, if you change the wave table, you don't need especially to have something noisy. If you remove the frequency, the frequency modulation you can have something a bit more let's say clear and uh, yeah and then you have this one so that's one of the rack that i use in a different way so this is my horn mod rack it's basically a kind of a fog horn or like bracy kind of sound but here I use it in a different way. Uh, I use it to like to more have a, like a kind of a sustained horn sound, but to put it more in the background. So to do that, usually you go to your reverb and you have a stronger dry wet and a longer decay time. If I bring the original rack here and I play the same note, let me see how it sounds. Yeah, so it sounds like this, but obviously if you filter it, change the color as well. And I probably 
change the reverb, you see it was more... And I probably filter it a little bit more. You can see, uh, I guess I add this EQ, if you add it somewhere here. You see, you get something. So this is something really I recommend to do with my rack, is to don't be shy to use them in a completely different way than the first intended purpose. All right, and then finally you have the mix down where usually it's kind of my master effect, everything which is related to sound design. So I have a low cut and this riser effect. Basically the riser effect is like a lot of delay and reverb and I use both them usually for all of the break and uh, yeah, then after it's just a mastering and we come back to it next week. But yeah, I think I've talked about all of the elements. Next week we will focus more on the arrangement, each part of the track, as well as how elements interact with each other. And I will talk a bit more about mixing and mastering as well. All right, guys, I hope you like it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe next week's part two. Thank you and see you soon, guys. Bye bye.